Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Last week on the Ark Review, we took a relaxing stroll through the bounty hunter infested streets of Whiskey Peak. But this week we are actually heading backwards as we travel into the prehistoric realm of Little Garden. Little Garden is the ninth story in the series and consists of 15 manga chapters and 8 anime episodes. And right off the bat, Little Garden introduces one of my favourite features of One Piece by welcoming us into the world of giants. And this was a pretty hard sell for me initially because as a child any media involving giants never really portrayed them as cool or powerful, and instead they mostly came off as bumbling oafs and I really could not care less for them. That is, until this arc. Dory and Broggy are just incredible characters who a whole new layer to the Grand Line. Giants are now the second non-human race to appear in the series behind Fishmen and they really do serve to show us the true power of this sea. Because Dory and Broggy are incredibly, ridiculously, absurdly powerful. It's almost as if the Straw Hats have stumbled upon two dueling gods and all they can do is really look upon them in awe. Furthermore, Dory and Broggy clearly embody the spirit of their entire culture. Even though they've been stuck in this duel for a hundred years, they are almost always smiling and laughing making the most of their existence and living purely for what they believe in. In fact, in a way, these eternally locked foes are living with a higher degree of freedom than most of the world, especially because they are completely unhindered from every major institution in the series. The world government, the Yonko, the revolutionaries, and even pirates have no presence here. That is until, of course, Baroque Works decides to ruin their duel, which introduces us to the main antagonist for Little Garden, Mr. Three, aka Galdino. And I can quite vividly recall hating almost everything about him when I first stumbled across this arc. His design was one of those crazy Oda gambles that kind of visually repelled me most of the time. And on top of that, his voice actor in the anime is a little difficult for me to listen to. But I will say that like most villains, Mr. Three grew on me quite a bit and I really loved having him in the Impel Down and Marine for Darks. Just, uh, not so much for Little Garden. Thankfully, it isn't just him though. Little Garden also sees the return of Mr. Five and Miss Monday, who were criminally underused in the Whiskey Peacock. And here, they get to take on a much more threatening role. Well, Mr. Five does anyway. I still think Miss Monday was a bit underused and very much played second fiddle to Mr. Five. In fact, most of the screenshots I have of Miss Monday are just her standing behind Mr. Five, which really tells us a lot about how active she is in the series. And finally, we have the ever mysterious Miss Golden Week. She has one of the most fascinating abilities in the series, primarily because she is not a Devil Fruit user. So she can essentially use her painting techniques, known as color traps, to forcibly change someone's emotions and actions. It's an absolutely insane ability. But I also really like Miss Golden Week because she's a more subdued member of Baroque Works. Up until now, every member of this organization was very much a larger than life character. But Miss Golden Week just kind of chills and does her own thing, which I really appreciate. Unfortunately, that attitude comes at the cost of relegating her to the background most of the time, while Mr. Three and the other crazy agents really take the stage in Little Garden. So yeah, it's a bit sad that we don't get more time with Miss Golden Week, but Oda did somewhat make up for that later on when he did a brilliant cover story featuring her as the main protagonist. And getting back to protagonists, I can't praise this arc enough for giving Usopp some much needed development. His character grows during Little Garden through his admiration of Broggy and the attitudes of the giants in general. He sees them as the ultimate beings of strength and bravery, and of course, aspires to be like them. And you know what? He even gets his chance to do so during this arc. In fact, were it not for Usopp, Nami, Vivi, Zoro, and maybe even Luffy would have died during this arc. He really saved the day during Little Garden, and I love how he made Karu his noble steed. Ah, and speaking of, Little Garden is the first arc that features Vivi and Karu traveling with the Straw Hats, while not under the guise of being Baroque Works agents. They add a nice new dynamic to our established crew members, with Vivi kind of acting as the eyes of the audience amongst the madness happening. While Karu, well, he's just plain fun. I'd actually forgotten how much I loved Karu in general. Unfortunately, I believe that Little Garden suffers somewhat as an arc because of the presence of Vivi and Karu. Every shot those two are in is a reminder that we are supposed to be on our way to Alabasta to face off against Sir Crocodile. That's just unfortunately what happens when you have a clear goal or destination in a story. To this point, the Straw Hats really had no goal and they were just adventuring around. But now that we have a certain place to get to, as readers and watchers, I believe that we just want to get there as soon as possible because that's where the real meat of the saga will be. But I will say that I think Little Garden is much more fun to go through in retrospect after having experienced Alabaster because it means you can really just take the time to enjoy this arc for what it is. Another unfavorable factor is that this is the second arc in a row where 
Sanji doesn't really feature in a primary role. He spends his entire time doing god knows what, and I mean he does get a couple of cool moments beating up the unluckies and speaking directly to Crocodile at the end of the arc, but uh, that's not really enough, and it makes me feel pretty bad for Sanji fans at this point in the series. Although like I said in Whiskey Peak, his absence does serve a narrative purpose to be accessed in a future arc. And that pretty much does it for Little Garden. Next week, we'll be taking an emergency journey to the Drum Kingdom, a winter island, and home to a certain lovable reindeer. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe, and please do comment with your thoughts on Little Garden. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.